This presentation is all about how companies grow. Theory and evidence suggests that two opposite effects occur as a company adds new projects, funded by increasing its capital base. Firstly, the return on each new project is lower than the one before in a pattern of diminishing returns referred to as the investment opportunity schedule. Secondly, which is the effect of interest in this presentation, the company's WACC increases as it raises more capital in a pattern of increasing costs called the marginal cost of capital schedule. The point of intersection of the two schedules is the optimal capital budget. This is of significant importance to the financial manager. A smaller amount of new capital raised and invested than this point is inefficient because it leaves untapped opportunities for increasing the value of the company. On the other hand, raising and investing a larger amount of new capital than the optimal capital budget would be a value-destroying proposition for the company because the cost of capital is higher than the project's return. Notice that WACC does not increase as a smooth, upward-sloping curve. Instead, it adopts the stepped pattern shown in the diagram. The amounts of new total capital at which there are sudden jumps in the company's WACC are called breakpoints. They occur because a company's costs of debt and equity are sticky and stay at the same level within limited ranges before a point is reached where the new issue of capital causes an instantaneous increase in the relevant component cost of capital. Adding additional complexity, equity and debt costs do not necessarily change at the same points. The identification of a company's capital breakpoints is underpinned by three main insights. Firstly, the company has a target capital structure. In other words, it has identified a preferred mix of equity and debt. Secondly, the structure is assumed to be maintained at all times as new capital is created by the company. Lastly, a breakpoint is defined in terms of total capital, but it happens when the cost of just one of either equity or debt changes. These insights have the following implications. New capital is always raised in the correct equity debt mix. There is never a situation in which new debt or new equity is raised by itself. Therefore, an issue of one capital component is always accompanied by the other. Recalling that breakpoints are defined in terms of total capital, this means that a breakpoint can be calculated simply by adding the new equity to the new debt, because these have been issued in the correct proportions. However, there is an alternative way being the equation on the screen. This achieves exactly the same result. Let's consider an example. You are presented with a company which has a 40% equity, 60% debt target capital structure. This proportion will guide all of the calculations that you do. The tax rate is supplied, which will come in useful when it is time to calculate WACC, but it is not needed yet. Finally, you are given information on the points at which new issues of debt and equity create jump conditions in their costs. Notice that although there are six different rates, there are only four points at which the component capital costs change. The minimum cost of debt is 7%, and it changes twice, from 7% to 8%, and then from 8% to 9%. Equity similarly changes twice, starting from a minimum level of 10%. This tells us that there are four breakpoints to be calculated. There are two main types of calculation that may need to be done. In order to calculate the breakpoints, you ignore the individual costs of equity and debt for the time being and focus only on the points at which those costs change. You start with the smallest jump condition, which occurs when new debt reaches 50 million rand. Next, you apply the insight that 50 million rand of new debt will never be issued in isolation. 
there will always be new equity too, and this must be the correct amount so as to keep the capital structure in balance at the target proportions. Therefore, 33.3 million rand in new equity will also have been issued such that the total new capital is 50 million rand debt plus 33.3 million rand equity for a total capital of 83.3 million rand. This is the first breakpoint. Notice that it can be more quickly calculated using the standard equation. You are encouraged to pause the video at this point and check that you agree with the calculations of the other breakpoints. The second type of calculation is to determine the WACC given a specific amount of new capital. Start in the first column by filling in the capital ranges bounded by each breakpoint and not forgetting the minimum range. The number of zones will always be 1 plus the number of breakpoints. Next, split each capital range into its individual equity and debt ranges on the basis of the target capital structure. Then use the supplied information on component capital costs to enter the relevant costs of equity and debt within each individual capital component range. Finally, apply the WACC equation taking the 30% tax rate into account. Notice that WACC stays static within ranges before going through a number of jump conditions resulting in the stepped pattern discussed earlier.